From Hannibal to Bates Motel, more and more beloved films are getting in on the ever-growing medium that is television. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies that should be made into a TV show. Now, if you two don't mind, I'm going to bed before either of you come up with another clever idea to get us killed, or worse, expelled. For this list, we're taking a look at movies with worlds that are so extensive and characters that are so varied that they deserve a whole TV series to expand upon their universes. Keep in mind that we're excluding movies that have already been adapted into TV shows. Just want you to know, if you need anything, don't be shy, okay? There are no rules in this house. I'm not like a regular mom, I'm a cool mom. <laughs> right, Regina? Please stop talking. Number 10, The Breakfast Club. Totally. 30 years after their Saturday in detention, people still wonder what became of The Breakfast Club. Who are you? Who are you? I will always. Given the untimely death of John Hughes, we'll likely never know. You're not fooling anybody, Bender. The next screw that falls out is gonna be you. Eat my shorts. What was that? Eat my shorts. Nevertheless, a show set at Shermer High School can explore how all the cliques and insecurities that accompany young adulthood have and haven't changed since the original Brat Pack graced the big screen. At its best, a Breakfast Club show would be smart, funny, and speak for every generation of teenagers. Forget it. Leave me alone. At its worst, we'll get something like the short-lived Ferris Bueller and Uncle Buck shows. Sincerely yours, The Breakfast Club. Don't, 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 don't. Number 9. The Fast and the Furious Franchise Let's race! With its first six movies, the Fast and the Furious franchise perfected its formula for success. Go! Take a few macho guys, give them fast cars, sprinkle in some beautiful women, this is yours, chases and explosions for good measure, and you've got a kick-ass action blockbuster. It don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile, winning's winning. That's pretty much all Universal Studios would have to bring to the table for a Fast and the Furious series to work. The franchise will feel right at home on TV, since so many shows center on heists, automobiles, and outlaws being pursued by the police anyway. Oh shit, we got cops, 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 go! Number 8, Inception. This is your first lesson in shared dreaming. Stay calm. In two and a half hours, Christopher Nolan packed more exposition, ideas, and philosophies into Inception than most storytellers incorporate into the entire run of a TV show. Something, isn't it? With that said, imagine what Nolan and company might accomplish with a series set in the Inception universe. Each week, a team of dream stealers ventures into a new target's mind and implants an idea into their subconscious. You need the simplest version of the idea in order for it to grow naturally in your subject's mind. It's a very subtle art. Seeing how dreams have unlimited possibilities, so would the story ideas and settings for Inception the series. Plus, maybe we'll at last find out if Cobb's top stopped spinning. Number 7. The Big Lebowski a. When FX adapted Fargo into a series, audiences were shocked by how faithfully the showrunners recreated the film's tone, writing, and dark humor. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Since they managed to do one Coen Brothers masterpiece justice, a Big Lebowski TV drama isn't out of the question either. The Big Lebowski series could work as a prequel concerning how Jeff Lebowski became the dude. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know? Uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino if you're not into the whole brevity thing. And Walter Sobchak's Vietnam days. He died as so many young men of his generation before his time. In your wisdom, Lord, you took him. As you took so many bright, flowering young men at Quezon, at Lawn Dock, at Hill 364. 
Of course, we'd also abide a sequel series about the dude getting acquainted with the little Lebowski and replacing his valued rug. That rug really tied the room together, did it not? Number six, the Alien franchise. Ah! Ah! Oh my God. Oh my God. The Alien franchise has already been further explored in sequels, prequels, crossovers, video games, and comics. God damn it! That's not all! A TV show just seems like a foregone conclusion. As for the plot, how about we finally get a proper origin story that reveals where the xenomorph species came from? What happened on the derelict spacecraft carrying all those alien eggs? I've never seen anything like it. And what the deal with Prometheus was? <laughs> or just show us cool spaceships and aliens attacking people. <laughs> As long as Winona Ryder's not involved, we'll tune in to watch. At least there's part of you that's human. I'm just, look at me, I'm disgusting. Number five, the Harry Potter franchise. Good luck, Harry Potter. With eight movies in the canon and a spin-off trilogy in development, we should be content with Harry Potter. This boy will be famous. There won't be a child in our world who doesn't know his name. Exactly. On the other hand, you can never have too much of the boy who lived. Don't tell me now that you've grown to care for the boy. The Potterverse is open to numerous TV concepts, from a drama about an underdog Quidditch team going for the World Cup, <laughs> to a sitcom about Dean Thomas and Seamus Finnegan sharing a flat in London, <laughs> to a reality show starring the Dursley family. <laughs> Dedicate an entire channel to original Potter-themed content while you're at it. Better be Gryffindor! <laughs> Number four, Mean Girls. So who has a lady problem that they like to talk about? Yes. Somebody wrote in that book that I'm lying about being a virgin because I use super jumbo tampons, but I can't help it if I've got a heavy flow and a wide set vagina. It's probably too late for the original Mean Girls to reprise their roles for a TV continuation along the lines of Clueless. I can put my whole fist in my mouth. Wanna see? No, that's okay. Since high school hasn't changed much since 2004 though, a sitcom can always follow a new class of plastics. Hey. Check it out, Junior Plastics. The only person who must return is Tina Fey, whose screenplay so hilariously captured the teen lingo with one-liners people still quote to this day. Oh, so fetch. What is fetch? Oh, it's like slang from England. If the project is left in anyone else's hands, we'll just get another ABC Family sequel. Whoever wrote it probably didn't think anyone would ever see it. Come on, Tina, let's make fetch happen already. So fetch. Gretchen, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. Number three, The Goonies. First you gotta do the truffle shuffle. Come on, do it! The cast of this nostalgic classic might be more ancient than one-eyed Willie himself, but that doesn't mean The Goonies can't still make a small screen comeback. Look! It's not oh. broken. It's perfect, huh? It's perfect. Oh what? my God! What? That's what? my mom's most favorite piece. The series could follow the adventures of the grown-up Goonies and their children, as proposed for the long-awaited theatrical sequel. Or the gang could return in animated form. You're dreaming, dude. There's no way. The latter would benefit from never having to age the kids and being able to send them on exploits too costly for live action. Don't lie to me! Honestly, we went over to Mikey's dad's place and we found a map that said that underneath this place there's buried treasure. Either way, we'd be guaranteed more exciting treasure hunts and truffle shuffles. We're in deep shit now, Francis. Oh, shit. Number two, The Matrix franchise. What is The Matrix? The Matrix Reloaded didn't quite live up to expectations, and Matrix Revolutions was flat out garbage. Why, Mr. Anderson? Why? Why? 
even if the Wachowskis alienated some fans with the Matrix sequels. The universe they created still has an immensely alluring lore. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. Television might be the ideal venue for the franchise to redeem itself, allowing more time to flesh out characters and ideas. Have you ever had a dream, Neo, that you were so sure was real? What if you were unable to wake from that dream? How would you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? Be it live action or in the spirit of the Animatrix, it'd be great to see the series cover anything from the creation of the Matrix to Morpheus' origins to the Machine Wars aftermath. Before we pitch our top pick to the TV networks, here are a few honorable mentions. Been recruited by the Starfleet to defend the frontier against Zor and the Kodan Armada. Walk down the right back alley in Sin City. Oh, leave your hands on and you can find anything. I don't even have to floss. Oh. Number one, The Incredibles. Elastigirl. Mr. Incredible. Of all the standalone movies that have come out in the past decade, none has left audiences pining for more, more than The Incredibles. Dad always said our powers were nothing to be ashamed of. Our powers made us special. Brad Bird's instant classic was tailor-made for further adventures in movies, comics, and television. You said we weren't supposed to use our powers! I know what I said! Listen to what I'm saying now! The potential for an Incredibles animated series is endless, pitting the superhero family against villains like Bomb Voyage and The Underminer every week. <laughs> Just like old times. Just like oh! old times. Ha <laughs> yeah. Hurt then too. <sighs> With Bird's masterful creativity at the show's helm, an Incredibles cartoon would surely deliver the comedic wit of The Simpsons meets the colorful action of The Avengers. That is the best vacation ever! I love our family. Do you agree with our list? What movies do you want to see turned into TV shows? For more entertaining top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Um. And none for Gretchen Wieners. Bye.